Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and remember, failure is not an option. It's mandatory. <laughs> In 2017, I have resolved to be more positive. Angus from Maker's Muse showed me the way his video about why this year is the best time to get into 3D printing hit the nail on the head. He's right. There's never been a better time. Better printers, better modeling software. Now's the time to get into 3D printing. No more looking at how you could fail. I want to just generally be more positive about things going forward. So I'm going to start today talking about a failure. Yeah. You know, my other resolution this year was to wear ties less. You could see how that turned out. Ended up summoning Ty Thulu, the best dressed of all the Elder Gods. All right. Maybe I'm not starting on the right foot, but my reasoning behind this is I, I feel secure. The the great and wonderful Vicky Soma, who is one of the most inspiring YouTubers about 3D printing who I've ever seen and who you should check out as well, made a video about how we should embrace our failures and how we learn from them. And she's absolutely right. And I want to take it one step further. I want to share those failures with others because I feel that not only do I grow from my failures, but you could grow as well. And I could learn from your failures, and maybe even together we could come up with a solution. In fact, I've got a problem with this project that maybe you can provide the solution for. I know it's out there, I just don't know what it is. So let's take a look at this project that I've been working on for a little while that didn't quite turn out the way that I was hoping. Here it is, a 3D printed lithophane lamp with a light bulb and a, a cover that goes on it. And these little lithophanes, they actually work really well. Now, I should mention that this sort of lithophane printed standing up was something that I wasn't even willing to try for a long time. I, I tried this once. In fact, the first lithophane that I printed was a Mona Lisa that I downloaded off Thingiverse. And when I printed it standing up, well, I printed it in ABS, so it got all cracky and messed up. But even where it worked, it didn't work. The detail looked awful. And so experimentally, I laid it down. And I didn't think that that was going to work, but it worked spectacularly. Even though basically it cut the image into 13 layers of, of hue or shade, it still worked out pretty good. But I noticed with that laying down print that there were some parts where... Now, this was a problem in the older slicers and it's still kind of a problem in newer slicers, but when a print comes to a very fine point and the 3D printer tries to draw that point, the slicer says, well, I can't quite make it to that corner. This is as close as I can go with my nozzle back out. And then when it comes in with the second layer, it has the same problem. Just inside of there, it goes, I oh, can't quite make it and backs out and it leaves this little triangle of air. Now, sometimes that's not a big deal, but when you're doing a print with details and with pictures that you want to get through, this can be a very big deal. The solution with those old slicers was simply to do one shell and then the infill would come along and it'll go, oh, I can go all the way to the corner with infill. I don't know why it made that decision. Some modern slicers will identify those little triangles and it'll fill it in with a little goop of plastic and some don't, but generally speaking, the one shell trick fixed it. And I saw this on the Mona Lisa. When I laid it down, the parts where it come, came to a fine point, I saw the little triangle, and so I went, oh, well, there we go. But what I didn't think was that that was the problem with the standing up print, which it was. Those little triangles of air were ruining the lithophane effect. I printed my lithophane laying down with only one shell and 100% infill. That fixed the problem, but I never thought until recently that maybe I could do a curved lithophane if I stand it up and fix it with that problem, and sure enough, that worked. I've been shying away from curved lithophanes and standing lithophanes all this time. However, the first problem that I made was that I made this as four separate lithophanes that I then glued into this, and you'll notice there's a big gap in between where the light's going to shine through. What I should have done is designed these all to be on a single cylinder so that I could just print them all together. So that's one thing that I would do if I could go back and start it over. I consider that kind of a failure. If you decide to do a standing lift thing, just do it in one, one size. This is 100 millimeters or about 10 centimeters across, which is big enough to fit even on the mini's build plate. So this curved lithophane totally possible on any 3d printer now 
I made a cute little base for it, and I ran into a problem with that too. First of all, I'm printing this in wood fill, and wood fill is a beautiful filament. I absolutely love it, and it smells fantastic while it's printing, but it can be a bit finicky and difficult to work with, and it can clog your nozzle with all the little uh, wood bits in it, and so uh, I had some trouble getting it started, and then once I got it started, and once it finally started working, I got it to this point, and I realized that the lettering I had put in here, the family name that I had put in here, I printed backwards. The curve that I had put it on was going the wrong direction, and so I had to flip it over to get it to work. So there was a failure that I had to basically start over and try again, but doing this in parts allowed me to do that. Finally, I realized that the, the stand that I had gotten goes up too high, and so I had to extend this with a little bit of, of extra height on there so that when it goes over it, it'll the light will be behind it. However, that stand I made just a little bit too big and unfortunately it's too late. I'm gonna have to leave it the way that it is and it's gonna be a little bit loose. So it's not perfect, but I think it'll work and I like the top on it. However, here's the last problem that I have. The light that I got to put in this generates a lot more heat than I thought it would. I thought that I was getting a light that didn't wouldn't generate much heat, but there was a lot. And so now I'm turning to you guys for help. Do you know of a light that I can put in this fixture that will prevent it from cranking out the heat so much? I'm gonna try LEDs in the future. I'm gonna try other things, but to make this one work, I need a light that'll go in a standard light fixture that won't generate a lot of heat. And I think they're out there. I thought they were out there before. Maybe you have the solution. So maybe you guys can help me turn this failure into a complete success. Anyways, I'm not going to throw this one away. There are a lot of things that I learned that if I went back to the beginning, I would do again. And maybe those will help you so that you can start out on the right foot. But this Let the Fame project was so much fun and so beautiful to work on. I really am very happy with how it turned out. Faults and all. I'm very pleased with this design. It is fantastic and and i'm looking forward to experimenting with this again anyways that's all that i had i hope that you have many successes and failures and that you share those failures with others so that we can help you grow and that you can grow we can grow together and this can be a great 2017 2017 the year of failures or great successes because of them for everybody as always i thank you very much for watching safety first and i'll see you next time Seriously though, that Thai thing was heavy and hot. It's like wearing a carpet around my neck. <laughs>